What's going on everybody, Ian here for Cult of Mac. And back in 2012, Apple released what would arguably become my favorite iPhone. This guy, the iPhone 5. It looked great, felt great in the hand, and it was just kind of a really futuristic looking device. And it moved us from a world of 3G to LTE. And now, eight years later, Apple is kind of revisiting that same playbook, except now with the iPhone 12 series, they're doing the same thing, just turned up a little bit. Now I've had the pleasure of using this for a little over a week now, took it on my family vacation to Disney World to really put it through its paces, and I have to say I think this may be my new favorite iPhone. And a lot of that has to come down to the fact that this iPhone looks and feels a lot like the old iPhone, except made more modern, made more futuristic, and definitely polished up quite a bit. Now one of the big reasons that I love the iPhone 12 Pro is the overall design of it. Much like the iPhone 5's sharp, boxy, edgy design, the iPhone 12 lineup ditches the rounded, bubbly nature of the 6 through 11 lineup, really, and brings us back into this boxy, squared off design that I've really loved for a long time. The difference being that back in 2012, the iPhone 5 featured an almost all aluminum body and those chamfered edges to really make it feel better in the hand. With the iPhone 12 Pro, Apple has ditched all of that in favor of a super highly polished stainless steel body as well as an all glass back with this nice matte texture that really feels great in the hand. And for as great as the iPhone 12 Pro looks in pictures and videos, seeing it in person and actually holding it in your hand makes it that much better. And whether you want something more understated like the graphite or the silver option, or something a little more flashy like the gold model or this Pacific blue color, which is the color of the year in their Pro lineup, there's kind of a device that can fit any personal taste or personal aesthetic as far as your smartphone goes. Now, regardless of which color option you prefer, the 12 Pro has a very premium feel. And part of that has to do with the fact that it is a little bit heavy. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone 10 or newer device, or one of the plus models of the older phones, the weight of the 12 Pro won't be quite as shocking. But if you're coming from something like a 6, a 7, an 8, or maybe even the new SE, the weight of the 12 Pro is going to be a huge jump. Now, the flat edge design of the iPhone 12 Pro does make it feel a little bit bigger in the hand. Compared to the 11 Pro, the 12 Pro actually feels like a thicker device, but in a true side-to-side -side comparison, they're effectively the same. One difference, though, is the fact that the 12 Pro is a little bit taller from bottom to top, making the whole device a little bit larger, bringing the screen size up from 5.8 inches up to 6.1 inches. The fact that the sides of the device are flat also allows the screen to go out a little bit closer to the edge, helping to add to that 3 tenths of an inch increase. Now that 3 tenths of an inch wasn't a huge jump in overall size, but I did notice myself stretching a little bit from time to time, trying to reach a button. The good news though is the fact that because of the dice has these flat sides, holding it is a little bit easier and it's a little more comfortable and I felt a little more confident, which meant that I was okay reaching across the device to tap a button or do something on the opposite side of the screen without worrying that I might drop it. Now one final aesthetic thing to note is the fact that the 12 Pro has this stainless steel band around it, which is a huge fingerprint magnet. So if you're somebody who really doesn't like to see fingerprints on your device, this one's probably gonna make you pretty sad. The regular 12 and the upcoming 12 mini do have an aluminum side on them, which would be better at preventing fingerprints. But the trade-off is the fact that on the back of the 12 Pro, you get this nice kind of frosted matte glass, whereas on the regular 12 and 12 mini, it's going to be a polished shiny glass, which means it's also going to collect fingerprints. Now, for me personally, I don't really look at the sides or back of my device with any kind of frequency, so it really didn't bother me. But one thing on the back of the device that I did notice is the new camera system. And if you're anything like me, one of the big reasons you want to upgrade your phone every year is for those camera improvements. And while this year's camera improvements are only a slight iteration on last year's 11 Pro, if you're on a device older than an 11 or an 11 Pro, the updates here in the 12 Pro are huge. Now the camera system is one of those things that I definitely noticed over the course of our vacation. Times when I wanted to take a photo inside where there was a little bit lower light, the iPhone 12 Pro performed amazingly. It was quicker to take photos, low light shots took less time to actually take the shot. So instead of being like a three second night shot, it was now a two second or a second and a half night shot, meaning that I was going to get better photos with less time, less blur and less grain. 
Now, some of those improvements are thanks to the slightly wider aperture on the main lens, as well as the new LiDAR sensor, which helps for faster focusing and depth sensing in lower light situations. The improvements to the ultra wide sensor are also another thing that I definitely noticed in this year's camera. With last year's 11 Pro, taking a photo with the ultra wide in anything other than bright sunlight basically resulted in really dark, kind of vignetted images with lots of noise, lots of grain. But on the 12 Pro, the sensor is both improved and it now supports night shots, which allow you to take pictures in much lower light and actually get something that's usable and with much better color, much better overall clarity and accuracy, and just something that looks much more appealing. Now the third lens on the back of this, the telephoto, is one thing that really differentiates the 12 Pro from the regular 12. And while there weren't many significant differences between the 11 Pro's telephoto lens and the 12 Pro's telephoto lens, having that option there in itself really made it nice to have that new perspective, that different perspective when taking shots. It also enables you to do some other things with portrait mode to get two different portrait mode zoom levels, depending on what your needs are. And portrait mode is definitely improved on the 12 Pro with the LiDAR sensor helping to kind of sense where things are in a scene. So you don't end up with weird cutouts around glasses or arms or in hair. And instead you end up with really, really satisfying, really, really well done portrait mode shots unlike what we've seen in some of the past years, which is a huge benefit for people who take a lot of photos with their phone. The final major camera improvement to discuss has to do with video, and that's because the iPhone 12 Pro now supports Dolby Vision HDR. Now, without getting into all the technical details, what it really means is you can shoot video with the iPhone 12 Pro at 4K, 60 frames a second, and enjoy the benefits of HDR, like brighter brights, darker darks, and overall, a wider range of colors. This makes things look that much more lifelike and that much more realistic. Compared to last year's iPhone 11 Pro, you can definitely see the difference, especially when you're shooting things that have bright lights or the sun in them or a really deep shadow. You get a lot more detail on the iPhone 12 Pro than you have in any device in the past. Now, outside of the new design and the updated camera stuff, a lot of the things that changed with the 12 Pro are actually fairly marginal. First off, there's the fact that now the starting storage capacity is 128 gigabytes, meaning that if you were to compare it to last year's 11 Pro or even this year's 12, you get double the storage at that base tier, meaning you have room for more photos, more videos, or more apps. On top of that, the iPhone also continues to get faster, this year rocking the A14 Bionic chip, but in Reality, I never felt like the A13 in my 11 Pro was any kind of slouch or couldn't handle things. So the fact that the 14 is faster and has a better neural engine really just means it can do more processing on device for things like photos and videos than for any other really heavy intensive type tasks. Another relatively minor change this year is the addition of Apple's new MagSafe technology in the iPhone 12 lineup. Now, while I don't necessarily love the fact that Apple has taken the MagSafe name, which I love from their old laptops and repurposed it into a wireless charging technology, the fact of the matter is, it's kind of cool to have a really easy, really convenient way to wirelessly charge your device without having something plugged directly into the lightning port, freeing that up for things like headphones or microphones if that's something you're into, and also allowing you to still use your device while it's wirelessly charging and not put as much strain on those cables. MagSafe is pretty simple to use. You just take the wireless charging puck, stick it on the back of your device, and thanks to a ring of magnets in the back of the phone or in Apple's cases that support MagSafe, things will just automatically line up and allow you to charge it up to 15 watts. Now, the only drawback to that is the fact that the charger in the box for the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro is a USB-C to lightning cable, meaning you're going to have to drop at least 40 bucks to get in the door on the MagSafe technology, but it does kind of add a little bit of convenience if that's something you're into. Now the final kind of tentpole feature of the iPhone 12 lineup is the fact that they're once again giving us some new cell capabilities. Now back with the iPhone 5, they basically added LTE to a 3G world and it took a few years for that to really catch on. Now with the iPhone 12 this year, they're doing the same thing, but they're moving us from LTE to 5G. And the promise of 5G sounds really great. Faster speeds, less latency, things that make using the mobile connection on your device that much better. Unfortunately, in the US at least, 5G is just really not there. 
Over the course of our entire vacation, it would have been great to have a better, more reliable cell phone signal, but instead I was stuck with LTE the entire time. And that's at Disney World, where a cell connection really is kind of imperative for things like ordering food, making reservations, checking the status of wait times at different rides, and even looking at different photos that have been taken over the course of the day. In fact, I wasn't even able to test a 5G connection with this phone until I made it back home to Chicago. And when I did, the results were actually pretty surprising. Most of the time in my tests, I was able to get at best the same speeds as an LTE connection and oftentimes significantly worse. So while I think the promise of 5G is definitely there and having 5G available in the future is really nice, I definitely would not buy a 12 or 12 Pro based on where 5G is now but instead maybe buy it as something to future-proof yourself if you're going to hang on to this phone for a couple of years. Now, one other thing worth mentioning as far as the 5G connection is that on the US models of the phone, there's this pill-shaped cutout, and that's for the millimeter wave antenna. Millimeter wave is basically a really short range, really high speed connection that's really kind of designed for implementing in very small areas. Things like baseball stadiums, airports, or really big tourist locations like a theme park. And the idea here is they can offer this crazy fast speed, but again, it's only in spots where there's a lot of congestion and a lot of people possibly using their device, and that speed is really critical. Now, one side effect of 5G in most phones on the market right now is the fact that it takes a huge toll on the battery life of those devices. But Apple's done some really great hardware and software integration to make 5G on the iPhone 12 lineup really not have a huge impact on the battery. And in my testing, I've been able to get all day battery life time and time again. Now in the past, I've often found that using my device while on vacation led to needing to charge, you know, midday or bring a power block with me so I could kind of top my battery up. With the 12 Pro, I was able to use it all day, every day in full sun, bouncing between GPS heavy apps and the camera, and never really have to worry about the battery life impacting whether I was able to do something later on in the day. In fact, of the six days that I was there, I only had one day where I plugged in before the day was out, and that was really just to top it up because I knew we were gonna be out a little bit later. Now, ultimately, the iPhone 12 Pro to me is an absolutely incredible device. After three years of the iPhone 6 style design, followed by three more years of the iPhone 10 style design, which basically looked like the 6 style design, the refreshed industrial look of the iPhone 12 Pro is just really, really welcoming. And for a device that's considered kind of a premium device, the iPhone 12 Pro is just about as premium as you can get when it comes to a smartphone. Now for me personally, I just prefer the look of the iPhone 12 Pro. I love the shiny body with the frosted glass over the aluminum body with the shiny glass. I think it just looks really, really good. On top of that, I really like having the option for the third camera. It's something that you can't get on the 12, but you get on the 12 Pro, even if that third camera isn't as impressive as the other two, it's nice to have that option available. On top of that, the fact that you can do 4K 60 with the Dolby Vision HDR is really nice because I do a lot of video stuff. And I also am really excited to see what Pro Raw looks like on the Pro devices later this year when Apple finally launches that. And all those things together really make the 12 Pro just worth that extra little bit over the iPhone 12. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. Until next time, I'm Ian for Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.